what's up YouTube? This your boy Watson Info set. I'm back with the third part of the elastic stack or elk sim build. So this portion is going to be installing the module called Packet Beat. And this module, uh, all my notes and everything will be on my GitHub repository. So I'm going to be going down this documentation list, installing all the necessary programs. And we're going to get Packet Beat set up. And if anybody don't know what Packet Beats is, Packet Beat will give you geographical location data on your connections that are coming from your host that have this module installed. Let's go ahead and get it started and go ahead and download the first application. First application is going to be NPCAP. We will need NPCAP to capture packets on this device. And I should have NPCAP already installed. Yes, I already have it installed, so I'm going to click no. But if you don't have NPCAP installed, NPCAP, um, <laughs> NPCAP installed, go ahead and click the defaults, accept those, and install NPCAP. So I'm going to click no. So the next one we're going to do is we need to install a notepad editor for this type of file. And the one I like using is Notepad++. The reason I don't want to use Windows Notepad because it do not format the .yaml file contents to what to the way you can edit it. So that's why we want to use something that will structure and format that file in the way we need to have it so that we can edit the contents. So let's install this Notepad++. Get this installed. Just set the defaults. Create a desktop shortcut if you want. That's cool. Get that installed. All right, we don't need to run that. So I'm gonna click finish. So next we need to install the packet B module itself. So all of these commands and links are coming from my GitHub. So I'm going open this file. I'm just gonna right click and copy. And we need to install this in the C drive, the local C drive in the program files directory. So I'm going to paste this here, give it permissions. Then we need to edit this file. I mean, rename it to packet beat. Now, once we renamed it to packet beat, we can close that window. So now we need to open PowerShell as a administrator. So like I said, again, this is a server 2016. If I haven't mentioned it, this is a server 2016 that I'm installing this on. So you may not see some of the applications, but if you are using Windows, this will be the same process. Or if you're using uh, any other different version, whether it's Linux or Mac OS, they do have documentations on that, how to install PackyB. But for this demonstration purpose, we will just be you know, going through using Windows for this. So right click on PowerShell, run as administrator. So now we have that ran as administrator. We need to change into the packet B directory. So we're going to change it to that directory. Now we need to enable the script. I copy that out. Enable the script. Set execution policy unrestricted scope current user, and we're going to hit R for run. Oh, I'm sorry, A to accept all. And now we need to run the installer for Packet B. It's a PowerShell script, and we're going to click run. That's what I was talking about. All right, you may or may not see a warning. I mean, um, a display list of other information. So I'm just gonna run it again and see what that list pop up. And that list did pop up showing you all the other parameters. Sometimes it runs the first time, but if it don't run, just run it again the second time and you see all the list of the 
uh, properties that pop up as well. So now this is the part where we would use Notepad++ to edit this file in PacketBeat. So the file we're looking for is called PacketBeat.yaml or .yml. Right click on that and edit with Notepad++. So now that we have that open, I'm going to minimize PowerShell. And I'm going to scroll up a little bit. So now we need to look for the output.elastic. So let's scroll down and look for output.elastic. We have to change a couple of parameters in here. So output.elastic. We need to change this to the elastic host or our sim host. Let me go back and get that IP address. So the IP address, we're gonna paste that right there. Now we need to put under our pipeline. So we need to look for the pipeline configuration. Let's see. We need to put pipeline right under our output die elastic. Let's see, let's go back down, scroll here, hit enter. Geo, wow, it didn't copy it, my bad. Let me go back, copy that again. And now we're gonna paste this here. Pipeline space GOIP dash info. Now, from the previous video in the security portion for the LXM build, you should have a file with username and passwords. So we would need to get those username and passwords that we had last time because the username and password that we are, that we are going to be needing is going to be the um, elastic password right here. So let's uncomment the username and uncomment the password. And let's go find that elastic password that we created last time. Bam. So let's change this to this value. Yes, we want to open as administrator. Bam. Let's save. All right. Change. Now we need to look for the setup Kibana. So let's scroll up setup Kibana. And now we need to change this value. Value, I mean. We're going to change that to that IP address. We are just telling our configuration file where to send the data to. Now we need to go to change some more properties. So this part, we need to add our DNS information. So I'm going to click and highlight processors. And we need to go find the processors in this file. Protocols. So we have protocols. Let's see where are our processors. Processors. All right, cool. So we have our processors right here. So now we will hit enter and paste these processors there. So the one thing you need to go through and do is edit the portion that says name server and choose a name server. I usually use Google and Google DNS number two. You can use any one, that's all right. But this is just for the um, domain name services for the lookup. 
Now we need to run the packet beat to make sure that we set up for the devices. We need to find out what device or what interface card that our device is using to communicate on the internet or on the network. So we'll go back to PowerShell. Let me. Wow, I can't scroll up. Okay. I was going to make this more bigger. So let me see. Font size 20. All right, cool. So let's look at packet B devices. Packet B devices. So the one that we are interested in is zero. And you can tell by right here, this is the information we are interested in because that actually has our IP address. So now we need to go back to that file and we need to go straight to the top to where it was asking for the interface name. And that is set to zero, which is good. By default, this one is set to Windows. I mean, it's set to zero, so we don't have to change that. So it says packet B interfaces device zero. We're good. Now let's go ahead and run the packet B setup. I'm going to hit control S and say this. Make sure all of our files are correct. I didn't really touch anything here. They mess with nothing there, but we did do the Kibana setup and that is correct. And we did the elastic output and we got the username and password and we got the geographical flag for the pipeline. So let's go ahead and close this file, minimize this, CLS to clear the screen. Now let's run the packet B setup. Now, if it gives you some error messages when it's asking for API, that's something that I don't know what it's um, trying to do. I haven't set up the API portion, but this is what we're looking for up here. All of this information is letting us know that it was set up. And it said index finished, loading dashboards, and then we get an error message about that. So that's something that's normal. You will see in my documentation that it explains that as well. So now let's start the packet B service. Now we have it started. Now this is the portion where we will go to our Kibana. So when you do go to your Elastic Stack or your Kibana interface, just type in that username and password that you created. So I typed in my username and password. So now we need to go to these three little lines here at the left hand corner. Click on that. Now we need to scroll down and go to Dev tools, developer tools. So let's erase this, close this console, and we are going to paste in our GLIP processor. This is all the information that is going to be using to set up the geographical portion of your dashboard so that you can see visualization of your active connections. So we're going to copy all of this. Put this over here. We're going to paste it in the left field. So we have all of this there. We're going to hit control A to highlight it. And we're going to click on this little green play button to send requests. If you see this acknowledge and says it's true, the, the um, GEO IP info was taken and it was accepted. So now, Let's go back to our Kibana. 
Let's go um let's just come on. And we're going to go to maps. So now we have the map portion. Let's add layer. Uh I'm wrong. Before we even do that, let's go check something. Let's go here to um left hand side click on these lines let's scroll down to uh stack management let's click on index patterns and let's create an index pattern let's call it packet packet b Packet beat star, and we're going to click next. We're going to select time field as timestamp create index. So now let's go back to Elastic. Let's go back to Kibana. Let's go back to maps. Once we go to maps, let's add a layer. Let's add heat map. I think that's the one I was using was heat map. Let's select our packet beat and geographical client. That's correct. And at this moment, I know we don't have any data because it's still fresh. So let's go and try running some updates and generate some traffic. There you go. All right, so I did wrong, my fault. So I went back. Instead of doing heat map, we gotta go to security layers, index patterns, and go to the pattern that we created was packet B. Once we go to there, then we will see our information. So now we can add layer, which we don't have to add anything else for this moment, and we're gonna close. So now we got geographical data set up on our map. So let me change the background color of my map, because that's going to drive me nuts. Edit layer, where is it? Oh well. So now we have that actual maps. Oh, I'm sorry, map settings. There you go. Uh, field color, fixed location. Nah, it's not there. Sorry, I was trying to do something to change the map color. But anyway, now we have geographical location data. So if we scroll in, we will see that we have a few locations that our device is trying to connect to. So we also see Kansas download Windows update, which that's what we just did was the Windows update. It went to Kansas. And we also see we reached out to somewhere in Houston, Texas. And also, we went to somewhere in Norfolk, Norfolk <laughs> and went to get Windows updates. So, we refresh again. And I'm going to zoom all the way out. Let's see what other parts of the country that we connected to get data in. Still in the U.S. So, let's go back and check again. I want to try a ping reply to Google. Or no, let's try to Cloud9. I want to do an active ping request to Cloud9. Let's refresh and see what it will pick it up. And see, we got something over here. Cloud9, that's in France. That's the one that, uh, not Cloud9, I mean Quad9. So if I go here to Quad nine. That's gonna be the DNS privacy um company. Quad.
why not and this is actually good for internet privacy with your dns but this is where i was using my pain as you see making an active connection i'm making an active connection to quad nine which we seen in our information here that i am making a destination connection to 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 .9. So this is very useful for intelligence gathering or all of your systems. You will be able to see where your systems are connecting to. What geographical portion of the world? What's the destination IP address? All this stuff is still being filled in. It hasn't refreshed right now. So let me scroll back out and see if there's, see if there's any more information. And we see we got something here. This is going to just scroll down. Let's let's scroll all the way down. Where are we at? What is this location? So this is somewhere in Boynton. I don't know exactly what state. Let's see if we can find out what state is in. Somewhere over there by Richmond, Washington, or Kentucky. But it's way from Kentucky, but still. We have a couple of connections going there. So we also have something in San Antonio, Texas. You know, it's just to show you that these are the destination IP addresses that my system is trying to connect to. So that pretty much sums up the packets beat module. And like I said, packet beats will give you geographical location data to your active connections that your system is making connections to. So this would be really good, like I said, for threat intelligence, um, open source, I'm not open, yeah, this all is open source, but open source intelligence, where it kind of helps you understand what is going on on your network. So just think on a larger scale, that you had this set up in a SIM environment or a NOC environment or even a SOC environment, this will prove very useful to knowing what's going on on your network. So thank y'all so much. This is your boy, Watson InfoSec. Appreciate y'all tuning in.